Look at for the hydro sector, for example, look at even the, the wind energy sector. They are in areas where most of the people are not willing to go. In therefore, difficult areas you are going to work, managing material, managing manpower, is that what you must do? Now, how would you do this? Therefore, each problem of the energy has to be broken down into small element. This small element has, small element has to be articulated by a group among you with the assistance of faculty. And I don't believe, by and large, that the management education could be a one-way process where a faculty comes and teach you. The management education has to be a two-way traffic in which you learn and the teacher facilitate and that teacher learns and you also facilitate. Now, if this is an environment, my first expectation from you and that how should you spend time is to first look at these small, small problems. And it is becoming almost a method by which education is being delivered is to problem-based education material. Like for example, if you were to only look at the last end, which is the distribution of electricity, if some of you to convert this into a management problem, you should sit down in a paper and make the whole gamut of the services which you are going to provide. You have to look at how to cost it out. You have to look at how to build in faith. You have to look at how to create a loyalty among your customer. Therefore, all that what you read through the programs of customer relationship management, what you learn through the marketing areas, and what you learn through your financial uh, papers, all that are required. And therefore, I would presume, therefore, is that you start from this problem and try to go back. And whatever fundamental is required, you should march on to that. And I remember this, that this experiment I carried out in the triple IT in Gaulle. What we would do then, we would go a project on the large gamut, broke down the problems in 20 odd problems, put them in a sequence, and try to give this project into two or three students, and let student articulate this. And when all these 20 put together, we'll give you what I'm expecting. And I thought, this is one most potential way in which you can utilize all your time here. I'm not saying don't go to the classes, go to your classes, learn. But then if you want to be an innovative person, if you want to create, then it has to be a different process. And the process which I advocate is going to be there. So I first of all call on you that you should be innovative in all what you do. I also caution that I advocate greatly the use of technology in learning. I also question you, from whatever experience I have in this country, talking to students and faculty, that bulk of the students tend to copy out material available from internet. I even recall that some universities had finally punished the student and faculty copying out the PhD thesis in MBA thesis. My first caution to you, Use internet as a resource place, but don't consider it to be the end of life. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go, should not go to internet, but I'm a firm believer that it is your own ingenuity of using the resource to focus out based on your own thought process a new product and a paradigm. And I suppose if you do that, this will not only help in terms of energy management, but will enable you to become a lifelong learner. <coughs> Let me recall you once that when 2000K issue had come, 2K issue had come, people had opened up shops, if you recall in 98, 99, so many so-called education institutions were started in this country, and most of the boys and girls tended to go to these courses. Where the difference between education and training disappeared. They, they thought that what they've been done were educated, but they what were done actually was training. In the moment that you came in, without any difficulty, 
neither the institute shall be blamed nor the jobs. And therefore, I plead to all of you, the young students, that create among yourself a learner, training will come automatically. I think most of the time young boys and girls miss out from a point of view that they come with a fo focus, fully focus, that I must get a job. You should get a job, yes. But should you be so driven that one particular job which is available to you is the end of life? It is not. I think if you look at the people sitting on the dais, none of them started from the day what they are today. The great speaker who spoke started the mathematics uh, expert in statistics expert in what he is today. He is a great motivator. And therefore, it must have come through a learning process called education. Please do not miss in the learning environment of two years that you are getting education. Training is only a supplement to it, which prepares to immediately to get a job at a given point of time. Let me butt it further by saying that in year 2001, two companies in IT, doing very well, <coughs> came to me and IIIT Gwalior and said, will you be able to educate some of our officers and employees? Why? <coughs> they said that whatever I do, they are not moving ahead. Now they have outlived their life of training. Either I train in a different skill, or I retrain them in an area where they can automatically change. Now why I am saying this point to you is that <coughs> use these two years to empower you in certain tools. Now what are these tools? One are the issues of character, which I thought was intense and I will not touch the issue. But I will definitely touch, and I said already, inculcate in you the way you want to learn and which in the present parlance is the so-called lifelong learning. Learn this attitude. Don't think that you are the master of everything. If at the age of 60, 65, 70, 75, my colleagues on dice are still learning, how can you stop your learning curve? Your learning curve must grow. It cannot become a plateau. Secondly, tend to differentiate between the plodders and the leaders. In any given organization, there are people who start with a lot of fanfare, they come down, come to a plateau, and they don't just don't grow. Whatever organization does, only those who have leadership qualities in them can only grow. Now, these leadership qualities are not the top material. Yes, some of the some of the methods and approaches, techniques can be told. But it is the way you train yourself to go beyond the point. The second point I like to make to you, the word global has been used, very well articulated. You will work in teams which are multicultural, which are multilingual, will have a mix of all other kinds of variety. Are you ready for it? You have to prepare to work in teams. And to be a leader of a team is very critical. And power sector is one area where you don't stand out. You don't, you don't remain a boiler person or a turbine person or, or, a, or something else. When you are looking at a management issue, you are looking all the areas and working with the team. One of the ethics of the team is that if you are a leader, you lead the people to, to achieve an objective, but although you have contributed to get the team right and get the output, the one of the ethics is to say, give credit to the team. Do not say that I have done it. And most of the teams which I have seen in this country, whether in the technology area or in the governance, people try to say, I have done it. And the people who have said, I have done it, they don't go. They don't go far. Unless you try to appreciate others' effort, your effort will be In fact, this question was asked to one of the very young entrepreneurs, Minister Heard, called Cassidy. When he asked, how do you do team? He answers that, if I have a choice. First he said, if I have no choice, 
then my role is to somehow to create a dream in the team which I share with you. Now, in your course program, if you learn how to build these teams, how to share each other's dream, and then this dream is to be realized, the process and the path, and obviously it has to be in the way, it has been said, it has to be at it, it has to be integrity, it has to be the ethics that is to be done. You cannot therefore, because you are future, you cannot do what I did, I have done. You have to carve out a niche for yourself. You have to carve out a niche in such a way that in your growth remains the organizational growth, in your growth remains the growth of the country. Now they appear to be at times not in not gelling with each other, but the fact remains that they gel with each other. If you grow, the country will grow. And if you are on the right path, I thought everything would be in the right path. The other issue which comes to my mind is that this country unfortunately has been very poor in terms of developing new products. I recall when we started the PhD program at Triple IT Bolivia, we tried to take up problems where what are the strategies adopted by companies to come up with new products. In 90% cases, the products are only modifications. Technology being sourced from outside, procedures were sourced from outside, and they were just replicated. And you recognize that in doing this, you don't really get the value which will get when you develop a new product. In this line, only people who realize that the innovation alone is the differential advantage to a company, only those companies are investing into the process of innovation. And I believe that in these two years, you try to look out for those companies, look at try to look at those products, where you got opportunity to create an innovator. And only then, what you would do will get more for what you invest. I think I keep on going on these kinds of issues. It's a great opportunity for you to learn in two years' time. It's your character in the end of the day which will set ball for you in future. This country is large. You might be a part of an elite group, which is 10 to 15 percent of this nation, which is good enough market for the world companies. But what glitters is not always gold. 60% of people in this nation are still are poor. Though are below poverty line only 37%, but the first time also I jumped from poverty line to middle level are still 30%. Some of you may be a part of that group. Don't forget that while you move into what is called in Srinivasan's world in the world of Sanskritization, but please do not forget that your own role as a part of that group, which need to be nurtured, which needs to be empowered. Thank you very much.